Hello. This is Sweet June 2010. Um, what I want to talk about today is um, how to deal with workplace gossip and drama. Um, just I'm at you know place in my life and getting older and I just don't like all the um, I work in in a daycare made a female dominated uh, field right now and I I don't I don't mean to sound sexist or anything I'm not trying to sound sexist but you know some things is just a fact you know um, I know that men gossip too and you know there certain can be issues with men but you know anytime you get a bunch of females together it's going to be some some kind of drama some type of gossip or whatever and I'm just uh want to share you know maybe some tips on how to deal with that you know and how I take steps to deal with it. It's very hard to deal with it sometimes because you know you're trying to go to work, you're trying to earn a living and the last thing you want to do is come to work and be bombarded with I don't know a bunch of drama and stuff like that. So I just um, basically uh, uh, first of all when someone is gossiping, you know, I'm not saying that I'm perfect, you know, um, there's times when I, you know, inadvertently got myself caught up in to some workplace gossip. But workplace gossip, you know, I did another video on that. You know, workplace gossip is very, very bad. And um, any kind of gossip is bad. And um, I know I'm human, I'm not perfect, and there were times where I got caught up in a little bit of that. But um, I tried my best to stay out of it as much as I po possibly can. Um, I know when a person comes to me and they tell me something about someone else, um, the best thing to do is shut them down. Saying, no, I don't want to really hear that. But I, I just, uh, you know, um, if I do, if they do come back and tell me something about somebody else, I immediately tell myself, do not repeat that. Just don't repeat it, you know. And I just make a conscious effort to not repeat what I heard. And so it's it's the gossip. It stops at me. It doesn't get spread any further, and it stops at me. And uh, the best thing to do in that situation is to shut them down and say, well, I just don't want to hear that, you know. Um, I just don't want to be involved in it, and I don't want to hear it. And when a situation comes up, when you got people talking about other people on the job um, you know two people are talking about somebody else or whatever like that the best thing you can do is try to stay out of the situation you know I know what I do is I just try to stay out of it if my like I tell myself and I you know I have to do a little self talk in my mind and I tell myself June don't don't get involved in it stay out of it <laughs> and you know don't ask no questions don't say who this like I said sometimes I'm not perfect and sometimes I find myself doing that but then other times I have to consciously tell myself to nope don't get involved don't you know just don't comment just remain neutral taking a neutral stance is just don't say anything you know don't ask no questions don't um, participate in the conversation you know, just take like a neutral stance. And if they come and ask your opinion on it, just say, I don't, I'm not in it. I'm not in it. Um, and, and that's how you take a neutral stand on a situation. You just, especially if it's a, if it's a controversial, I know sometimes people talk about uh, controversial subjects on the job that, you know, uh, as a Christian, it's, it's the best thing for me to do is to remain neutral then I have to try to remain as neutral as I can on the situation because I don't want them to I don't want to get attacked for going against what they believe and you know how that goes 
So the best thing to do is to just, um, if two people talking about somebody, just try your best to stay out of it as much as possible. And um, another thing I try to do is I try to um, um, not spread and no spreading of gossip. You know, like, you know, like I said, I don't. I try not to repeat anything that I've heard or anything like that. I just, you know. If somebody comes to tell me something about somebody, like I can say it stops with me. So that's the best thing you can do um, about workplace gossip is to ju just, just don't repeat it. Just simply do not repeat it. Um, and, and, and it stops with you, so it stops with you. It doesn't get spread because what happens is if that person goes back and tells what you said, and I've been in situations like that before, that person goes back and tells what you said, guess what? You're in the middle. You're in the right in the middle of the situation. When so and so said that, or you know, this and that, you're you know other, and then that other person go back and say, well, why did you tell them that? You know, and then sometimes if, if it goes through a number of people, the, it it gets all twisted up, and it, and it, and then the truth becomes twisted. You know, it's 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 a shame. And it's a situation where two people. And your workplace are feuding, you know. You just, you just, you want to stay out of it. You just want to stay out of the situation. Try not to get involved in it, you know. Um, if it doesn't cause uh, problems to where um, it's interfering with the work, it's interfering with the work that you guys need to be getting done. Um, it, now, if it's if it's, if it's interfering with the work that you guys need to be done, you can say, well, you know, well, we got to focus on what we need to be doing here. You know, guys, you know, we got to break it up so we can focus on what we're doing. You can kind of say something like that. But just, you know, other than that, you know, just stay out of it. Um, but like I say, if it's interfering with your job and what you're trying to accomplish on the job, you got to tell them. Look, you know, you, you uh, we gotta squash this because we gotta do our job, and do what we we gotta do whatever the job is. In my case, it's taking care of children, so uh, you can't obviously be having a conflict when you you have to uh, watch the children. You know, you have to be attending to the children's needs. So that's a major issue. Um, but uh, it's a situation. Um, if if you have a situation to where uh, a person is uh, just trying to start something, if they're trying to start something or whatever, you know, if they're if they're trying to start something with you, I know um, on my last job, you know, I've had to ask, actually had to physically walk away from somebody you know I had to physically walk away from this person because I had to keep myself from blowing up you know and uh, getting you know myself all worked up and all upset I had to actually physically walk away from the person and sometimes that's what you have to do on the job sometimes you have to actually walk away from that person you have to walk away from them because if they're if they're um, trying to start something with you, you know you don't want to get yourself in trouble. You know, um, it was the one in incident where I tried to walk away from the individual, and she just kept needling me and needling me, and I we winded up getting into an argument. You know, but you know I was kind of pushed at my limit. So um, depending on the person who it is, it's sometimes difficult to do that. Um, Sometimes it's, it's, if it's someone that's continually harassing you and continually, continually, you know, trying to do things against you or whatever, that's when you need to document. That's when you need to document and start writing things down on what's taking place. You write down times and you write down dates or what's taking place. So you, when you do go to your employer and discuss it with your employer, you have something to you know, con something concrete, you know, because even in the court of law, you know, hearsay doesn't stand up. You got to have, you know, every, you have to have, have concrete proof for everything. 
So it's best to, if it's that type of situation, it's best to write it down and to document what this person is doing to you. So like when you do go to management, you got some, some ground to stand on. You got some concrete proof here. It's like, look, I, I took a record. I made a, made a record of what was happening and they did it this. They said this to me on this day. They did this to me on this date and this time. So you got like, you got like a little history. You have like a little record of what's going on, you know with this person you know because um, if it's a situation to where a person is harassing you on the job if you're being harassed or you're being bullied um, they're subjecting you to a hostile work environment and if they're subjecting you to a hostile work environment you have the right to um, work everybody has the right to work in a non hostile work environment and so uh, if they're subjecting you to a hostile work environment then you definitely need to document that and and uh, write it down and document what they're doing and give dates and give times and everything like that that way you got some concrete proof even if you got to take it to court you got the proof now however it is the employer's responsibility to make sure that you are not subject to a hostile work environment. It is their responsibility as an employer to make sure that you're not subject to a hostile work environment. And so if you present them, if you take the, everything that you wrote down, your concrete proof, and you present it to your employer, and they brush it off, then you know you got to call the labor board if it, if if the if the harassment pers persists you have to call the labor board or contact the lawyer or something like that and they'll let that employer know what their responsibilities are okay because everybody has the right to not work in a hostile work environment and if it's a situation to where you're being harassed by someone or bullied there there's a such thing as called book workplace bullying and um a person I've been bullied on jobs in in uh, uh, in this workplace bully where somebody is constantly bullying you and needling you and always on your back and sometimes supervisors do that sometimes a person and that's called abuse of power it's abuse of power when a, a supervisor is is riding you they're riding your back they're needling you they're you know singling you out and they're you know pointing out every little flaw that you make or you know, I, I've, I've had situations to where I was harassed and bullied by, you know, supervisors. And that being the case, then you have to go to the person above them. Document what's happening. And you have to go to the person that's above them. To If they don't, doesn't get resolved there, then you need to either call the labor board to find out what next steps you need to take. Or you need to contact a lawyer. Like a lady on my last job was um, being harassed she was literally being harassed by someone and the management wouldn't do anything about it they just kept letting her you know get har harassed and she literally I was a witness and other people was a witness and she literally kept harassing this person so she she started she literally contacted a lawyer because management wouldn't do anything about it and she started talking to a lawyer and when they when management found out that she was talking to a lawyer, they took action. And they got they they fired the young lady the, the lady that was doing the harassing. Of course she was doing some other things as well. She was harassing some other people. And um it was just it this all came to a head. So that's she started talking to a lawyer the victim she started talking to a lawyer and then that's when they took action so sometimes that's what you have to do you you have to actually go to a lawyer go to the labor board or go to a lawyer because you have the right as an employee to not be subject to a hostile work environment and if somebody that somebody is subjecting you to a hostile work environment when you're when they're bullying you and and it causes they're causing you anxiety. Write down your feelings when you document what's happening. Also, write down your feelings. Write down your feelings of how you feel when this is going on. You know, are you having anxiety? You know, are you nervous? You can't concentrate on your job. That is yes, that's serious. That's serious. If this person is 
bullying you and harassing you to the point to where you can't even do your job or you can't concentrate on your job, then that's an issue. And that's something that management has the address to address. And if they don't do it, then you need to take it to the, to another level. Because as an employer, they it is their responsibility to make sure that you are not subject to a hostile work environment. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but, you know, I took an employment law class, so I learned some things. A very informative class. And even if you do the research, you read books on it, or you look on the Internet and Google it, you can learn a lot of different things as well. And so, um, if, it, if it's it, it, uh, a situation to where um, it is, uh, you know, uh, a number of people, document. Document, document, document. That is so important to do. But um, the best thing you can do as well is to make sure that you're not participating in gossiping, you know, like I, I talked about in another one of my blogs, malicious gossip. See, malicious, malicious gossip, uh, let me show you, tell you an example. Um, like, reg this is regular gossip. All of it is bad. Regular gossip is, um, well, S Susie called in the other day. Oh, really? What happened to Susie? Um, well, she, she had the flu, you know. I heard she had the flu or, you know, that's why she didn't come to work, you know. That's, you know, regular gossip. You know, or I heard she was that, which is not, you know, good either, you know, because medical issues is confidential. Um, <coughs> that's regular gossip. Now, malicious, this is malicious gossip. Malicious gossip is, you know, well, Susie, I heard that Susie, you know, uh, was, uh, uh, I don't know, um, doing something in the street or, she, you know, doing something bad or whatever in the street. Yeah, that's what I heard, you know, or I heard that the supervisor um, chewed her out because she wasn't doing her job or whatever. And you don't, you don't necessarily know that that's true. You're not sure that's true, but you're spreading it, you know. You're spreading the gossip. You don't know that that's true or not, but you're spreading it. That's malicious gossip. Or I heard that Susie wasn't doing what she was supposed to be doing or she she didn't she refused to do this or she wasn't doing what she's supposed to be doing that's malicious gossip you're putting somebody's job in jeopardy when you're doing stuff like that and if you spread that gossip you're a party to it so you just have to make sure that you're not spreading gossip it's very important in the workplace to not spread gossip but like I said, I've been in situations where I was caught in the middle of something. I accidentally said something that I should that someone else had said, and I accidentally repeated it, and I shouldn't have repeated it. And then there was a lot of drama caused because of that. So you, so sometimes it, it's not intentional. Sometimes you can accidentally slip and repeat something, or repeat something that someone said. If somebody said something negative about somebody. And you let it slip that that person said this, it's going to cause a whole lot of drama. <laughs> Trust and believe. I, I speak from experience because I've been in these situations. <clears throat> and you wind up getting yourself caught in the middle of that whole situation. So the best thing to do is this um, if somebody's like a situation to somebody, if, if somebody's talking about somebody or whatever like that. It's best to not even get up involved in it. And definitely don't spread it. Don't say, don't repeat it. Don't go back to that person and say, you know, so-and-so said this about you. Because this is going to start up a whole lot of controversy. It's going to stir up a whole lot of problems, especially amongst females. <laughs> and that interferes, workplace drama and gossip interferes with the workflow. I don't, I don't care what type of job you're doing. It interferes with what you need to be doing on your job. You know, whatever it is that you need to be doing, it's going to interfere with that. And, and, and that can cause uh, productivity problems with productivity and, and everything else in a situation to where 
should people have to be taken care of? I know in my last job, I worked at, assist, at an assisted living facility. And the, this lady, this lady um, was angry. We had an emergency where we had to go where a resident was actually laying on the floor. And he was in distress. And we had to clean him up. Okay. This lady that was having issues with another lady that I was working with had such an attitude, had such a big attitude that she did not come down and assist us. We, we had to, there was, a, when we, when a resident, that was, it was protocol that when a resident falls, we have to take vitals. We have to get them off the floor and we have to instantly take their vitals. First thing, off rip. Then if they need to be cleaned up, we got to clean them up. You know, this is a situation to where we had to call an ambulance for this particular resident because he was laying on the floor and he was in distress and he was messed up. You know, he had um, um, used the bathroom on himself. So he was, this resident was in distress and we needed assistance with this resident. Well, this lady has such a big attitude <laughs> issue that with uh, either both of us or the other lady that I was working with that she refused. She literally refused to help us with this resident. Now, that's that goes against that's a HIPAA violation right there. You know, that goes against, you know, um, and when you when you it gets down to a situation to where you're supposed to be caring for a person. You're supposed to be taking care of people. And it gets to the place to where you're not giving adequate care because you're beefing with somebody. That's when it becomes a major problem. It becomes a major problem when you're in this. This is true, true, true story. This really happened. And she and me and the other lady I was working with, we looked at each other. We couldn't believe it. It's like, no, she didn't walk, she literally walked out of the room and, and refused to help us. And that's also insubordination. Anytime that you refuse to do the job that you are required to do, it is insubordination. And, and, and uh, <laughs> believe it or not, she was not fired after that. Well, you know, I know, <laughs> I know why she wasn't. <laughs> I'm not going into that, um, so that's not what my blog is about. But it, you know, when it's a situation to where someone needs to be taken care of, it, 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 it it's that's unacceptable. You cannot refuse to do your job because you're upset with somebody. You know, I went into rooms with this the same person where, once again, a resident was in distress, and she's like, "Get away from me." Yeah, telling telling me to get away from her in the presence of the resident. Once again, interfering with resident care. It's like whatever it is that you're having a problem with with this person, you need to set it aside. Set it aside, and you know, do what you have to do for the resident, and then deal with the issue when y'all get back in the break room or whatever the situation is. But see, uh, the, unfortunately, this particular employee was not um, professional. She was very unprofessional, and she just didn't have the maturity and the professionalism to do that. And so that's when it becomes a problem when you're in a situation to where you're taking care of people. Um, it, that can workplace drama can, be, can become a major issue because it starts to interfere with the care that you need to give. Um, Right now, like I say, I'm working in child care, and if, and, if, and if there's so much drama going on between two people that they can't even effectively, we have to, they say we have to maintain a bird's eye view of the children at all times. Now, if you're so busy arguing with a person and conflicting with someone, you can't do that. You're distracted, and you can't do that. It's affecting your professionalism then a child can be endangered because it's our responsibility to keep them safe. 
at all times. That's why we have to keep we have to keep a bird's eye view. Because we have to keep them safe. That is our ethical and our moral responsibility to keep the children safe. If you're so busy arguing with someone, then you can't effectively focus on the children. And if a children has a, the, one of the children has an accident because you were sitting there arguing with somebody, that's a major problem. It's a major issue. So when it, when you, it comes down to two people. To uh, to where you have to, to where people have to be taken care of, that is very serious. That is very very serious. Uh, the situation on my last job, that was life or death. We had to call an ambulance on this resident. He was in distress, and she literally walked out of the room. True story, and refused to help us because she was upset with. The lady, other lady that I was working with, she could have been upset with me too. I don't know. With her, you could never tell the difference. <laughs> so that was that was totally unacceptable. And she told management, and at the time, management didn't do anything about it. Go figure. So um, that is that's a HIPAA violation. It goes against our ethical and our moral responsibility to the residents. And everything it goes against all that. You know, any time you have a job where you are taking care of people and you have people's lives in your hands, regardless of whether it's children, elderly, or whatever, disabled people, or, or, or whatever, where it's a situation to where working as a nurse or nurse's aide in the hospital setting or whatever, if, if you have a responsibility to take care of people, then you, that, you have a moral and ethical responsibility to do the best you can to be of service and provide for those people and you're not supposed to let anything interfere with that you know otherwise you're violating that code see people don't understand that and so that's that's the thing you got to leave if you're having issues with people you, you take a make an appointment with management and sit down and have a meeting and talk about it don't bash it out in front of the people that you're taking care of. It's unprofessional. It's unprofessional. And, and um, it, you got to um, have a meeting. You know, you know uh, when you, you get done doing what you have to do, you go have a meeting and talk it out and hash it out. That's the professional thing to do. Um, I might talk further on this. Because uh, I like, I think I have some more information on this, but I just want to. That's some viable tips. That a few tips that I hope that I helped you guys with on how to deal with gossip and workplace drama. Uh, be uh, feel free to weigh in in the comment section on you know what you how how you feel about this blog and let me know you know what you think about it and everything. Okay, this is Sweet June 2010. God bless.